A resident of Kherson has posted a video cut from enemy UAVs over a short period of time showing how the Russian military is hunting civilians in Kherson. The video was posted on Facebook by Yuri Antoshchuk, a new media trainer and expert on information and communication internet technologies. Here is a cut of video from enemy UAVs in a short period of time, how the occupiers are hunting civilians in Kherson. Antoshchuk wrote, According to him, dozens of explosives are being dropped on ordinary people. Cars, cyclists, minibuses, ambulances, firefighters and volunteers on a daily basis. Kersonets noted that these are not isolated incidents. It is already commonplace. Just like people drink coffee, tea every day, the Russians are deliberately hunting ordinary people in the city. The morning begins and Russian drones fly out to hunt. The animals are training on Kherson residents, and Toshchuk wrote. He explained that the Russian military invented a story and told themselves that any vehicle in Kherson is their legitimate target. And Toshchuk said that on some streets you won't see a single car in a day. The Russian occupiers attack every car that comes into their sight. And if they don't like the appearance of a passerby, they can also drop explosives on him. Well, they will justify any of their crimes with the phrase, legitimate target, he said. He also reminded that when the leaves fall, the Russians additionally remotely mine the streets. They scatter anti-personnel mines from UAVs, which can easily tear off a foot if you step on them. These mines are difficult to spot in the foliage and are targeting older people in particular. And Toshchuk also noted that in some villages near Kherson, it is impossible to drive in and out because all roads, landings and fields are sown with mines. In Kherson, the streets and roads are also being covered with mines. He added that the Russians write in their propaganda publications that we should also take care of ATMs and shops to force civilians to leave. But as Antoshchuk emphasizes, despite all this, dozens of projects are being planned and implemented in Kherson and other frontline communities in the region. People continue to work. As Ukraine Form previously reported, video evidence of another war crime by the Russian army was shown in Kherson. Russian drones hunting civilians. Chief of Ukraine's General Staff Anatoly Bagilevich and Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Olga Stefanishina seem more interested in begging the White House to allow Kiev to strike deep into Russia than discuss any kind of peace plan in the United States. Russian Nezavizimaya Gazeta media outlet reported this. It is noted that French Minister of the Armed Forces Sebastien Lecornu has already announced that his country will send its Mirage 2000 multi-role fighter jets equipped with air-to-surface missiles to Kiev. Retired Russian Lieutenant General Yuri Netkachev recalls that Ukrainian pilots are currently being trained and will complete their training in France by the end of 2024, and the fighters delivered to Ukraine will be equipped with new air-to-ground weapons. It is still unknown how many mirages Paris will deliver to Kyiv and what specific weapons these multi-role fighters will have. According to Open Data, France has produced over 600 of these aircraft. This summer, French President Emmanuel Macron announced that his country would deliver upgraded fourth-generation Mirage 2000 to five fighters to Ukraine. This is a modernized export version. About 50 Mirage 2000-5 units were delivered to China. The French Air Force has about 100 Mirages, including about 30 Mirage 2000-5F aircraft. It is from this series that the fighters for Ukraine will most likely be delivered. These aircraft can be equipped with MICA-EM guided missiles with an active radar homing head capable of destroying air targets at a distance of up to 50 kilometers on the fire and forget 
principle. Since Le Cornu reported that the fighters for the Ukrainian armed forces will be equipped with air-to-ground weapons, the Mirages may use AM-39 missiles, which have a range of up to 70 kilometers. It is also possible to use the French low observable cruise missile Scalp-EG, modifications of which are capable of hitting targets at a distance of up to 560 kilometers. That is, they can hypothetically reach the capital region of the Russian Federation. The Ukrainian armed forces already use Storm Shadow Dash Scalp EG on Ukrainian Su-24 fighters. One of Kiev's goals is to draw NATO into a confrontation with the Russian Federation, Netkachev believes. This goal will be achieved if the alliance countries officially allow Kiev to fire its missiles deep into Russian territory. The consequences could be dire. After all, Russia has the means and the methods to effectively respond to such aggression. According to estimates from U.S. officials, Ukraine will be able to hold the territory claimed by its forces in Russia's Kursk region for at least several months, if not longer, reports Bloomberg. According to officials, Ukraine has not yet faced serious supply issues in the Kursk region as Russian forces have launched only limited counterattacks and have instead focused on their offensive in eastern Ukraine. Officials noted that the Ukrainian armed forces now have more stable supplies of artillery ammunition thanks to the efforts of their allies. President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that Ukraine could use this territory as leverage in negotiations, although it remains unclear when talks with Moscow might take place as Russian President Vladimir Putin has not shown serious willingness to engage. According to Bloomberg, Ukraine's allies suggest that Zelensky may be preparing to adopt a more flexible position, exploring ways to end the war. U.S. officials said Ukraine is trying to determine the best way to protect itself during the winter and is also beginning to plan for actions next year, including the possibility of additional brigades. Recently, there have been no significant advances reported by either side in the Kursk region. Russia's counter-offensive in Kursk Oblast has also not yet ousted Ukrainian troops from the region. The Ukrainian military claimed on September the 18th that the counter-attack had stopped, with Russia only regaining a handful of settlements. Moscow is instead concentrating on its grinding advance in eastern Ukraine, closing in on the Donetsk Oblast cities of Pokrovsk and Toretsk. President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that the Kursk incursion succeeded in drawing some Russian troops away from Ukraine's front line, but that it is too early to judge the overall success of the operation. Zelensky also maintains that the offensive has helped Ukrainian prisoners of war by replenishing the country's exchange fund, enabling prisoner swaps with Russia. The seizure of Russian territory is meant to improve Ukraine's bargaining position in future peace talks. Mykhailo Podolyak, an advisor to Zelensky's chief of staff, Andriy Yermak, said earlier, Many in Ukraine have felt that Russia, who brought the war to their doorstep in 2022, should face the consequences of the conflict.